I don't know if it was a snake, but wait, it hit in Mach 5. There you are. There you are. Nice pass. Nice pass. Nice jump, buddy. Way to go. <laughs> I love when they put on a show. Well, hello there, folks. Out here today getting ready to fish the Patuxent with my teammate Jason and maybe Rashawn. We'll see if he wakes up. But we have a visitor here on the road. I'll take a minute and try to get him to safety. And yeah, little box turtle. It's funny how often you see these guys in the road. I'm all clammed up. Let's get you off the road, buddy. There, I know you're trying to warm up, but try to stay safe. <laughs> now I started the day at the wrong launch. <laughs> My teammate Jason over here, he dropped me a pin and everything, and somehow I still managed to go to the wrong launch. So first thing I had to do was kick it in the high gear, pedal all the way up there, got a good workout, and luckily the pedal drive on this PA-12 is just fantastic. And on that note, looking for any kayaks, kayak gear, I don't know why you wouldn't go to Delaware Paddle Sports, y'all. Customer service is excellent, they got all the gear you need, and it's tax-free, and I tell you what, when you're talking about new kayaks and some of that gear, that tax-free really saves you some money. Now since the lower and middle Patuxent is really just brand new water for me, definitely letting Jason, his father, and Mike out here show me around a little bit. So thanks again, fellas, for showing me the water out here. Right there. You saw one? Yeah, that huh? I didn't hear it. No, no. one just popped right there, splash. I'm reaching back trying to get my other rod. Mm -hmm. If you look really closely underneath this overhanging tree, you're going to see a dragon class snakehead that I spooked right here. See the pockets coming up on the right hand side? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just saw one. I'm pretty sure I just saw one. Only thing is I thought it was a log. It was a big yeah. fish. <laughs> Ooh! 60% of the time it works every time that was a hit i think it was a bass i know it was a bass because i when i detected the hit my line had already moved way over to here and there was no bubbles like i grew up fishing flukes all the time one of my it's like used to be one of my favorites yeah exactly dude like when I, when that's the kind of conditions i'm dealing with i will use that fluke no doubt about it it's just Oh, wow. I'm looking at a giant snakehead and I can't stop. Or am I? Is that wood? Okay, it's wood. I feel better now. <laughs> That's one of the most convincing logs I've ever seen. <laughs> now, when you're fishing these types of waters here that have these overhanging bushes and trees along the shoreline, a type of cast you're going to want to get familiar with is called skip casting. And generally speaking with that, a lot of the best lures you're going to find are going to be your soft plastics. There are some other lures out there that can skip fairly well, but a lot of lures won't. Some characteristics I know that help are having very smooth edges and surfaces on the actual lure. That seems to help skip. And weightless lures especially are much easier to skip than heavier lures. In this case, as you can see, I'm using a zoom fluke on here. I think it's a 5 inch in pearl color. And it's about a 1 eighth swim bait hook that I'm using with it. Makes that tail flutter on the fall so well. A little lizard up there on a log. I mean, that's one thing I like about spinner baits, chatter baits, you know, all that kind of stuff. You get feedback on your cast, yeah. you know? That's the thing that drives me crazy about fluke fishing is like you don't really feel anything unless you hit structure or a fish. By far, oh! Dude, I just missed a big Oh. 
I don't know about a snake, if it was a snake or a catfish, but he just floored the out of that. <laughs> I mean, he, I don't know if it was snakes, but it hit in Mach 5. There you are. There you are. Nice pass. Nice pass. Nice jump, buddy. Way to go. <laughs> I love when they put on a show. I love it. Yeah, come here, gorgeous. Come here, gorgeous. That's what I'm talking about. Come here. Come on. Put up a good fight, but it's over. Come here. There you are. Yeah, dude. And he was jumping. He got some height on them. Yeah, he jumping like a smallie, buddy. Props to you. <laughs> and that, folks, is what I'll be doing next weekend. Is fishing for smallies down on the Rappahannock River. So if you like that kind of action, make sure you check it out. All right, beautiful. I'm not kissing you. You got a sore on your lip. <laughs> you got the hurt. You ain't getting no kisses. And is this a parasite here? Can't tell. Yeah. All right, you. Good luck to you. Thanks. Now that, folks, is on this kind of blue herring. I think that's about the roughly color of this pattern. It's about a, it's a fluke right there, and that's about a 1 8th or 1 16th ounce weight on there. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up or not, but I'm gonna try. Watch how this thing falls if it, the camera picks it up. Can you see that tail shaking? It's deadly. Freaking deadly. That's the third bass hit that I've actually had. That one I let him take it for a minute. I saw the line jump and I was like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I don't turn down bass. The only time I get a little bit irritated about bass is when I'm fishing a snakehead tournament. I was down there on the wrap, and I know the wrap has good bass fishing. So I, I entered that side pot. I was like, yeah, you know, I usually catch a lot of bass when I fish down there anyway. I caught one bass all day, about 10 inches long, dude. <laughs> like you little rascals. And I was talking to other dudes out there. Yeah, I caught six or seven bass. I mean, granted, I tore the snakehead up. I probably caught 10 snakehead, but... Those are thick ones, too. Big, big old thick water snakes right there. Yeah, dude. Oh, you see him pop his head up? <laughs> Those are good-sized water snakes right there, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you're looking at. There's, I see one big one here. Oh, yeah, small one over there. One there, one there. Yeah, I see at least one, see, a, two, yeah, three, one. four. Hey, here he goes back into the rock. There goes that one. Mm -hmm. This one over here. I see one in between the rocks as well, right here. Yep. See the back of that one's tail. If you yep. this red one, if you go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See I see it. Here. Good God, man. This place is loaded. I would not get down in these rocks. Right. <laughs> yeah. Big old fatty. I see one moving back in the grass too. Yeah, I'm gonna back off this one. Good. Join you in your kayak. <laughs> right? He is into it too. Look at him. Come to me, jungle friends. Oh, that's <laughs> so I, so I, I wanted to reach for my phone in the worst way, man, to get a really good shot of him. I knew it was being, being this close. As soon as I reached for my phone, he was going to freak, and sure enough, he did. 
That was awesome though. You, I mean, you don't normally get that close to them. What the hell? Did you hook yourself? <laughs> he jumped before I set the hook. I, know. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know if the camera caught that, folks, but he jumped before I even set the hook. Here we go. Got her. <laughs> All right, little fella. Thanks. Let's do it again with a bigger one. <laughs> Now what I'll do is show you the tool that I use to find different launch points all around the state of Maryland. It'd be really useful too if you want to explore the Patuxent. There's a lot of different launches along the Patuxent River out here. But the one thing you have to be really careful of without a doubt is that <laughs> these Patuxent gates, these launch times at these parks, the open enclosure times are kind of rough for fishermen. Usually they don't open until 8 in the morning, they'll close around 7 at night and they will lock you in. Like, no joke, they will lock you in that gate. I saw it happen to someone, and it almost happened to me this day. I lucked out. Mike out here today was able to give me a ride back, and I got back just in time, and even then they were trying to lock me in. <laughs> so if you're going to use these launches, make sure you pay attention to that open and closure time. But with that said, let me show you this tool. So this tool you're looking at right here is produced by the Maryland DNR and it shows essentially all the public water access points in the state of Maryland. It'll give you descriptions on different aspects of the actual launch, whether or not it's improved, unimproved, kayak, boat, what size boats, who owns it, how to contact someone for more information, and lots of other details. It's a great tool out there if you're out there trying to find new spots to fish on the water. And aside from that, if you want to look at different tools you can use to find fishing spots, Make sure you check out my How to Find Snakehead Fishing Spots video. It is geared towards snakehead, but the tools on there you can use to find any species of fish you're trying to catch. So I'll be back to the Patuxent here. On this area and others, there's lots of areas to explore out there on the Patuxent. Because my buddy Jason over here, I'm definitely trying to check it out and see where these big snakes are hiding. Because I know they're there. <laughs> but hey folks, if you enjoyed watching it, Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And keep an eye out for the video for next week. That one's going to be incredible. That will be a video of day one of my three-day, two-night kayak camping trip on the Rappahannock River. And I'm telling you, that's going to be a fantastic one. So much action and so much beauty out there. But anyway, thanks for sticking around to the end for this one, folks. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And good luck on the water. Have a good one.